Next subject, how to break an artist. All right, bro, I've been waiting for this one, bro. Like, I've been waiting for this one, bro. <laughs> so we, we got to give context to this topic, right? All right, so, go ahead. Like Sean said, we on this retreat was since the 80s, and they had us do a really interesting team exercise last night. And the exercise was they had everyone out here go around the table and write down in, let's say it was like 10 steps or less. I think I don't think there was a limit on the steps, but basically how many, however many steps, how would you break an artist? Like if you was a you know manager, label, person that has vested interest in the artist, and you had your game plan on how you gonna take that person from you know whatever situation you see in your head to big star or a popping act, basically the breakthrough point. Yeah. How would you do it? And yeah, bro, I feel like we need to share what we put. Cause we have really different answers. Some of yeah. them were aligned, but I feel like the way we went about it was, was pretty different, which I thought was right. interesting. I think we can go run through mine and yours quick and then get to the bigger conversation yeah. that came from it. Cause it's, a, it's, it's more of the lesson that comes from this than anything. So my number one was music. I'm gonna focus on the music, make sure that the music is right. Um, Cause the way I'm looking at it, I know from all the campaigns we ran, look, nothing works like good ass music. Yeah. Like, and some bad music, you <laughs> you really pushing uphill. So we want to make sure that the, the, it's, a, the art, it's an artist that has some really solid music. I'm not talking about full blown development, that that production production, which is a great thing that I, I could have thought about that, but I don't, I don't. In my personal life, I don't have that investment to just throw into an artist yeah. yet, or, the, or the infrastructure yeah. set up. So I'm just like, I'm picking an artist. I'm going to pick an artist that has really dope music that's unknown. That's okay. what I'm starting. Okay. Okay. So well, we, we're just going to step by step? Do your, do your number one. Yeah. So my first step was just getting the artist to believe it's possible. And so what I was coming from that is a mentality thing, right? I think before any of the other steps can really be enacted, like you got to get that motherfucker to believe. You know what I'm saying? Show him some some tune core statements, show them some results of campaigns, right? Give them something to make them go like, oh, this is possible. Cause I think especially, you know, in my head, I was thinking of a complete like ground zero rapper, like like a motherfucker I heard like rapping in the hallways. I was like, oh, you follow, you should make music and right. get popping, right? See, you almost gotta sell them mm -hmm. on the vision. On the dream, yeah, exactly. See? And that's the difference, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't like working right people who <laughs> hit, you gotta have it for yourself. Cause I can't want that shit more than you. So I'm, I'm immediately thinking, <laughs> <laughs> you have to want it big. You see it big. I can sell someone on a vision along the way, but it's gonna feel like work at some point. But I, but even with somebody that already sees it, I like that for reaffirming yeah. the possibility yeah. and just showing them how real it is. Like getting them in environments like this, like yeah. little stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you said, tune court statements, whatever it is, yeah. just so they can know. And um, that their dream can be real. Yeah, because it changes at every level. Like, I'm sure there's an artist out there making 100K a year that if somebody come along and show them, you can make 10 million a year, it might yeah. completely change the way they move. Yeah. Right? Even though they're doing well, it right. probably would change the way they're doing. So, yeah, that yeah, to right. me is like first step, yeah, bro. Let them, got, let them taste what it look like. Got to make All them believe right. it's possible. <laughs> so, my number two, which I kind of pushed to, they are, the argument became I'm, I made two steps in one. But I said, get your vision. Right, you have clarity on your brand and what you want to do in the marketplace, right? Because to me, I've encountered so many artists that have good music that get confused once they start putting music out there. They want to release this song, and the next thing you know, they want to release on a totally different style, or they don't like their fans, and they're making music that won't connect with the people that they want to connect with. But yeah. it, it, but yeah. it's popping. Remember, we, we got one artist that he got popping with people that he didn't want to oh, yeah, like perform with. for, yeah, right? With, yeah. But it was going crazy yeah. for people that he didn't like and wanted to be his fans. He was actually kind of like creeped out by them, right? But it was for that fan base, it was a, it was a really good big thing. So, like, you have to understand, like, that clarity of what you want and does what you have and the approach that you're going to take actually connect with those people, right? And then I, my, my pairing that was illegal, apparently, <laughs> was, was see the void in the marketplace because you can have something but present it in multiple ways right okay. so like justin bieber was like there was a missing um place of like a young kid at the time he came in like this young boy pop star right so there was a void in the marketplace yeah. if there was another guy who already existed they might have approached it a little bit different like he might have had to go a little bit left of that guy who already existed, whatever that might have looked like. So understanding, oh, there's a complete void of this. Now, oh, we can go straight for these little girls' hearts, yeah. right? Make him the heart throb. There's nobody to move on this, and we need to move real fast and make sure we dominate this before it's anybody else's chance for another five years, right? Yeah, yeah. So 
Like, that's what I was thinking. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply, it's completely free, but the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Yeah. Wasn't that Usher that had that vision? Usher signed just to be right. Usher. Him. It was a, it was a bit of war between Usher and Justin Timberlake. Usher ended up getting them. Um, you know, you know, it was him and Scooter Braun from the get go. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So my number two is just make the artist look presentable across the board. And so what I was thinking about with this was like visual branding. Let's make sure the DSPs look nice and professional. Let's make sure the socials look professional. I don't think at this stage, I'm necessarily looking for the artists to have like a look. I think I would be looking for them to like, actually, yes, I would. I'll be looking for them to have a look. At least a look that we could, we feel like we could translate well visually, whether that be, you know, content, hard assets and things like that. But yeah, bro, the second step for me is like, we got to make you look like somebody people want to listen to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. All right. so. I think for the lads ones, we should just run through them so people can hear our vision, then we can talk about the different visions. Okay. All right. So my next step was content development, meaning, hey, we're going to help you understand how to create content that people actually are going to consume and enjoy, but it has to reflect your brand and give you that muscle. Because I look at content development today as a similar thing to music development, yeah. right? Like that has to be a muscle. And I'm not saying to have you posting three, five times a week, seven times a week. It's really just to know how to do it and communicate your brand in an experiential way online, not the post TikTok and put my music behind stuff. Right. It's a completely um, different thing. Once you know how to do that, now we're going to push your music okay? because you know how to create the music. You have the vision and you also know how to present it in the context. So let's push your music using all those elements and hopefully start to find the first hit. Then we're going to double back and do some shows because now you have some music out there to do shows with and help you build that muscle of doing a show because I'm trying to build a superstar, right? So that means you need to, you know, I mean, you don't need to today, technically, actually, to have shows. Mm. But if the ones that last, we already know that the cream of the top, uh, cream of the crop, a statement that was made by somebody very well established here who's, who's done that thing, made a lot of money in this with artists, the moment you can be identified as an entertainer, your your price goes up. Yeah. Right. It's the difference between artists and entertainers, right? Beyonce, Bruno Mars, the like, different price, right? So working on that side of the muscle, because we're thinking long term, it's not just, oh, we're trying to cap off of the music and make some money. That's nice, but it's more so for the long term. And then we're gonna get some PR so we can get you everywhere, be omnipresent. You know, you think of the ice spice type stuff. Give it about eight weeks of going hard, like you're popping up, being in a, a video collab with an influencer who's popping at the time in your space. And then we're also doing some PR campaigns around um, that influencer. But again, mostly not that, not that influencer, the artist, but more from a social media standpoint. So just popping up where people get the narratives, whatever the narratives make sense for that artist. And then we're going to start working up on a follow up song, because in my mind, all right, we built you the, the skill sets. We got you popping, then we and then we develop your skill sets a little bit further um, for, through shows, and now we made you omnipresent. All right, so mm, okay, got the skills. Now you put yourself into the marketplace and launch, and now we start dominating to break the artist, not just the music. That's what the PR stuff for the social media PR stuff was got for. Got you, okay. And then we follow up and assume that we had one song that was strong, and maybe you might have had a couple that. I had a nice little level of visibility, but now we're looking to find a second song to really tie shit in. Yeah, cement them. Yeah, to cement you as like you're a legit artist. Yeah. All right. And not just somebody with one song that we happen to know a lot about because you did the PR stuff. We still need to connect with music. We want to 
like keep going the artist route. That's how I saw it. Okay, all right, that's a, that's a solid, solid breakdown, man. Solid breakdown. Well, let me look at my next step. Oh, so my next step from that was release music, right? So, like I said, in my head, this artist is complete ground zero. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm thinking of, right? So just get them to start putting music out there, and really start building a catalog, and you know, having something for the fans that we ideally build to experience. After that, develop a content strategy because I'm all about the free. How can we get shit shaking with yeah. little to no money involved? And kind of like what you said, man, it's going to teach them a lot about communicating their vision to their audience um, in a way that is not going anywhere. <laughs> so, you know, I, I do think that's a very valuable skill set. Um, my next step was find the song, right? So that kind of makes me think about Lightning Rod concept. We have an agency. I once heard another marketer say, hey, bro, only take one song to get in the game. And I've, I've lived and died by that ever since I heard that quote. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause that shit just changed my life when I heard that shit. So my next step would be like, yo, let's figure out like what the song is. Ideally, this will come from um, the content strategy and that's kind of watching how people move on, on that stuff, mm-hmm. you know, but it might be some gut feeling. Maybe we take it to people we trust, but either way the goal would be to find like the song, the song we about to try to push the single. Uh, after that, man, build a paid marketing funnel. All right, so this is the ads, this is the influencer strategy. This is the PR campaign. This is us building out our fan building funnel using things that we can control. That's how like I look at it. You said what? Like what? Like the ads, like the influencers, like the PR stuff that we're like, we can't really be gatekeeped out of getting it. Cause I'm looking at this oh, too. Oh, so when you're, all right. Last night I was thinking about like a paid marketing funnel, like, hey, I'm selling merch. Cause I'm going to get paid off of merch. It's a marketing funnel. You were talking about like things that base. we can pay for. Yeah. So paid mark. Okay. I got yeah. it. I got yeah. It. Like paid marketing funnel. Yeah. Right. So things that are help grow the artist fan base that we can control that we can't be gatekeeped out of advertising right. influencers. Got it. Um, things like that. Right. Whatever that looks like based on resources and, and budget at the time. Okay. Uh, set next that would be, and this one might be kind of, uh, and then I look back on it, but I put get the artist to hundred K streams with no playlist, no playlisting. I'm not including playlisting in my paid marketing funnel because I, I want to have a very clear assessment of the artist fan base and who we're talking to. I don't want nothing muddying up my data. Yep. Maybe down the line, but not, not at this point. And I'm looking at the 100K streams as building proof of concept because it's going gonna, it's gonna to tie into my, my next step. But I believe in like building proof of concept of an artist. Like let me, because every artist think they're lit and they can make it. Everybody says it about an artist they work with. Yeah. We need proof <laughs> to believe that, proof. right? Okay. Um, but like I said, my next step is now I'm going to start looking for industry partnerships. So DSPs, uh, platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, things like that. Other artists, right? F- trying to figure out like who their peers are and, and get them, you know what I'm saying, associated with those people or next to those people. Maybe execs, you know what I'm saying? Depending on how I feel about it. I'm not the, the most like exec chasey type of guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But maybe, maybe for the artists, you know what I'm saying? If I feel like there's some value there. But at this point, I've already built my funnel to get the artist's music fans and get them awareness in like the music space. Now I'm trying to get them industry awareness, right? And, and get them in front of people and things that can help them just- Why make- industry? Why fan awareness before industry awareness for you? Proof of concept still. I think a lot of, uh, uh, so the conversation we had one of them last night changed my mind a little bit on this, but I think they're a different breed of people. Since the <laughs> 80s is a different breed of people. Cause Barry was like, you know what I'm saying? He don't always feel like he need to see numbers to believe in somebody, which I think is noble and even cool to hear. Cause I know I haven't really heard see, that before. This goes into the latter conversation though, right? This is one self-belief in that as, your, as yeah. you know, as an individual, I can make some shake. Yeah. But that also becomes from the, the position. Yeah. Too. Right. You've done a certain amount of things and you have a certain amount of, uh, amount of leverage, knowledge, and resources that you can see something and move on it a lot quicker and build afterward where someone at the beginning, you might need yeah. a lot more proof of concept to know that this thing is going to happen. It's like the analysts who watch NBA games and they're so focused on stats. Why? Cause they don't know what that shit really looks like. Yeah. Cause they haven't really moved through the motions. They yeah. don't have the instinct for it. And that, but, and what they try to discount is this instinct isn't just some woo woo shit. My instinct got built through legitimate experience and actually seeing it from the ground level. So, it might seem like, oh, I'm just making it and I'm not being scientific, but I've already gotten evidence on evidence on evidence. And I've seen the things that the numbers can't reveal, which allows people, I think, to move like that. That's what I thought about. Because the other buddy, number uh, number two, yeah, you know, Zeke was like, 
Oh, I'm locking them down on them papers. Yeah. Like to make sure, again, on understanding that experience. Yeah. When I when an artist takes off, how many times do artists blow up and then leave the manager who's done all the work? Yeah. Right? Which again, going back to artist decision making and some or just artists always not always assuming they're the only ones getting screwed over. Yeah, no many time have no idea how many times managers and people dealing with artists have gotten screwed over by the artists. But it, people just don't fuck with the people they don't know as much, the people behind the scenes, so it doesn't become a big story. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. never going to have an interesting campaign. Oh, Beyonce got screwed over. Oh, that's a big story. Kanye, people are interested in that. It's not going to be news that this manager from Milwaukee got screwed over that you don't know by your favorite artist. You don't even want to believe that because yeah. you love the artist too much. Yeah. Right? So artists that are never going to happen. Though. That should do fucking happen. Oh, more... More yeah. often than you would love to acknowledge. And that's why I say, like, I I know those type of people exist. Because I even think about, like, Sam. Sam is like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, one A good friend of mine. He's like that. But I think once you start getting to DSPs. Well, he's just, just good guy in Yeah, like, he, if in he industry, believes in something, yeah. like. Yeah, he's a, yeah. If he believes in something, even if they don't have the numbers, like, he'll stand behind it yeah. and try to help him out. Because I've seen him do it before um, with Taj. Like, with Taj Keaton. Um, he was helping him build from ground zero. I, well, all right. Before you get into your next thing, I think another and hearing him in that same example, I think another thing that goes with that is, of course, the belief in that artist and also having a vision for what you want to build and be yeah. a part of yeah. as well. So which when we talk about recruiting team members early on, if y'all are, are part of the same vision, they have a similar vision to you and what you can accomplish, that's all you can ask for as, as yeah. an artist. All right? yeah. You can't expect them to give you everything or have all the resources, but they have a similar vision. Yeah. Shoot. And that's why I said like, those people, yes, bro. But for, for, for what I've seen with the DSPs, maybe the DSP sometimes, but the social platforms, they don't usually move like that. They no. want to see some numbers. They Not want to prove a concept, right? Hey, before I give you this TikTok partnership, I want to see a quarter million crates. Yeah. Right. So that's that's to me why the proof of concept building is so valuable because I do think that if you push the arts in the right way, you will come across those people who don't care. But I'm thinking about the ones that do care. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? We've been honest. So like that, that's what made that my next step. Um, well, so looking for industry partnerships. Oh, next step would be trying to figure out how to monetize the artists. So figuring out, yo, how can we get some money back in? This to me ties into the proof of concept conversation um, because I do think that more doors open for you when you can prove that the artist is making money, right? It's kind of like that last conversation we had last night where they were saying that if you can build a profitable artist, like you, you lit, you know what I'm saying? Because everyone doesn't build a profitable artist. Very yeah. few people build a profitable artist. It looks like there's a lot because we see all the big dogs. But if you think about how many artists release music that are not making money, the fact that you get someone making money is seen as a very valuable thing in the music industry. Yep. Even if it's not like a crazy amount. Damn, you got your artists making 10K a month? Damn, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I know 150,000 motherfuckers that wish they was making 100,000 a month off that, right? So figuring out how to get the artists making money. And then my last step will start looking for funding. Because now I feel like we got that pipeline. We have the... We have the music fans. We have the industry awareness. Um, you know, we built proof of concept. We started monetizing the artists. Now we just need funding to like gas it and like really break them through. Mm -hmm. So that's why that to me is my last step because I wouldn't want to approach an investor personally without the other steps in place. Because it's about leverage. You don't want to move without leverage. Yeah. See, so I think the big takeaway from all of it, because there are so many other perspectives and people who approach their rollouts different than us, it came down to a couple things. One, the way you're going to go about it is based on the resources that you have in hand and your main primary skill sets and mm -hmm. experience, right? So there's that. Two, EJ went crazy on a very specific artist yeah. that he imagined. He's who was speed. a speed. Yeah, basically, I, <laughs> yeah, speed, that's pretty much who he built, right? It was a, a gamer, right? Streamer, culture artist that he was able to build everything around. So the specificity is going to change how you approach these artists. Most of us gave some general tenets and more framework approach of how we would approach it. But when you have a specific artist you're working with, it's actually going to change how you do it. All right. Which leads me to the ultimate point that um, Zeke mentioned. I <laughs> what both of them mentioned. Right. It was like, hey, if we knew exactly what to do, the amount of money they have would be crazy. We do it every time. Right? And they've done it. All right. And he said, we'll do it every time. Never do it every time. Right. But you don't know exactly what to do for every single artist because every single artist is different where they are, their fan base. There's new things to learn, but it's more about taking those frameworks and moving on them, learning and then learning how to navigate and feel your way through it, which is the instinctual part that can't be accounted for. That's why um, labels 
like to buy momentum that's already established because mm-hmm. they can skip the learning phase of like who this artist is, who their fan base is, how do I learn the artist and how they move, what song is going to pop. Like that's a, that's a new thing to learn. And training, just like when you hire new employees, right, yeah. is extremely expensive. So yep. that's yep. that was like the big value in the conversation. Like just remembering, even for these people who have helped break multiple artists or been a part of, like, you know, not just, you know, we talk about the Earth Gang and, and Jig, but been in, being a part of Wiz's situation. Um, Shit, Mike Dimes, that's a new act that's, that's starting Mike to push Dimes. through. Yeah, helping out with, yeah. Who else was an older one around the Wiz Khalifa stuff? I forgot. Oh, Mac Miller. Mac, Mac Miller. Yeah. Right. Been, these people have been in part of multiple situations and they're still not like, oh, there's just one step that I can run every single artist through, right? Or this one set of steps I can run every single artist through and break an artist guaranteed every time. That just is what it is. So never forget that. Now, with that being said, 